Yeah, yeah, you start. All right, boom. Let's get it. Let's get it. We were just talking about algorithms and and showing what it pops up on our screens. Honestly, I'm interested to hear what you got going on anyway. There's a lot of oh my algorithm. There's a lot of sports. Okay. Uh, th- there's like a lot of like I don't know how to call this, but there's like a lot of like you know gay jokes. Okay. Wait, what do you like? So like people in stand up doing? No, no, no. Like dudes just like you know like they'll they'll be at the gym and it'll be like how to like encourage your brother, how to encourage your bro when he's like maxing out. And <laughs> okay. Like, you see okay. the dude maxing out and he's struggling and the dude's like spotting him and out of nowhere he'll just like kiss him. <laughs> All right, that's kind of why. He's yeah, like, good yeah, job. He's I don't like, know. I don't. Good yeah. job, brother. You lifted it up. I don't know what I liked. In order to get that on my algorithm, but I see that I like like fifteen times a day now, uh, and it's funny. But I just oh, I just want to know what exactly led that up to that point. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Writers Block Podcast. I got a special guest this in the, the building. Be go ahead and get a little round of applause. Oh, that's the wrong freaking one. All right, there we go. Hey, I got a special guest in the building with me. We are here at the Comedy Zone because the brother with me is featuring and on tour right now uh, with Giannis Papas, all right, and he's the co-host of the Long Days Podcast out of New York, all right, and I just watched the set last night. This brother's funny as hell, all right, unique, and I was just telling you, uh, and in the green room the other day, man. What, what, like talking about your set? I was very inspired, bro. You didn't waste words, man. You yeah. didn't waste any words. That was nice. It was nice to to see someone who's been working, who's young, and doing their thing. I got Jared Harmon with me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, you're from New York. From New York. Is that yes, where you started? You started comedy out there? Yeah, born and raised. I started com. First time I did comedy was uh, at my school, Oneonta, upstate New York. Okay, it was like uh, college. Yeah, it was college. What yeah. was it like? What was the like a it was it was an open mic night. Okay, there was a lot of brothers with uh, you know spiritual poetry, <laughs> you know, talk about their God. background, you know, and, and what the sun actually means, the rays yeah. coming down into their melanated body, <laughs> stuff Co- like that. A lot of cocoa butter in the yeah, air. A lot, lot of shea brothers, butter. There was a lot of brothers who didn't have a father, and Malcolm X took that place. You know, <laughs> they were they were reading a lot Dr. of literature. Farrakhan. Like, yeah, you know, the white man is the devil, devil, <laughs> sun, everything around me, and then I had to go up there and be like, yo, what's up with this financial aid situation oh my god you know that's so funny it was it was nice though you know my first time doing it um i started on vine in high school you okay know? So yo like, shout out to vine man yeah, shout out peace. to vine <laughs> listen that just shows you how long jared's been on the internet first of all jared's 25 when yeah. you said that on stage i was like what the hell this man's like a year older than me how old did you think i, I am i thought well originally i thought you were gonna say like 28 at most 28. i wasn't i wasn't expecting anything crazy mm. you know what i mean but but even still like when you see someone as proficient and like <laughs> when it looks like they're a little you know more polished yeah 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 and and you know you're just like oh they might you know they might be a little, a little more more yeah. Age, yeah, usually because I get like 17. Wow. So when I check into this hotel, which also is a comedy club. Hey, the best Ramada Inn in the yeah, world, the man. The best Ramada Inn <laughs> in the world. You know, some people, they have a jacuzzi open. Nah, they got five minutes that you can do on an open mic. <laughs> you know, it's real nice when the person who checked me into the hotel also lights me to let me know to get off stage. <laughs> Yo. You know, this is a real, it's a real great setup over here. Hey, man, we're unique out here. It's you know, we're unique. unique. We all work together. No, so. it's very unique, but uh, budget cuts. But yeah, <laughs> 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 not like um, when, when I checked in here, the the lady who checked me in was like, "Wow, you, how old are you?" I was like twenty five. She goes, "Yeah, well, you look like you twenty or oh nineteen. My gosh. And I was like, "Yeah," um, but you know, it, it, it was a white lady who checked me in, mm-hmm. and they are not used to aging gracefully. Oh, you so, know what? Yeah, was it the what kind of like vampire lady? Yeah, yeah she, dog. I mean, she looked like what, the Scooby Doo villain. <laughs> yeah, yo, yeah. Yo, yo. <laughs> she's a sweet lady. Dog, she's you, a sweet lady. But you definitely you took that's that, good. That's a good one. Yeah, you take the hold off her face. You go, Mrs. Jenkins. <laughs> Dog. The, whole, the whole group is caught. <laughs> nah, nah, Shout but out like, to her. She's sweet. But no, nah, thank you. Thank you. You know, it's, I've been doing oh, it. Man. I'm 25. I've been doing it eight years. I started in college. You know, <clears throat> I started on Vine, just making funny videos. And yeah. after that, you know, Vine, Instagram had 15 seconds. So I was just like making sketches like that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Snapchat was popping in high school. Yeah. And my, boy in, and my boy in high school, he would make like funny videos. He would make like, he would tell a story on Snapchat, basically, that lasted like five minutes. Um, and I said, oh, I wanted to do that. So I would tell stories about, like, what happened to me at, at school, a grocery store, when I got hit on by an older lady. Okay, hell you yeah. Know? And I made it an event in the school. Like, I would post about it the day before. I'd be like, yo, a uh, new story coming up tomorrow.
tomorrow and I would make hype about it. I would tell people at school, like, yo, I'm going to be doing this story. And people would be like, just people ex- walking by, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Just shouting out. And people would be excited. Yeah, that's big, man. People would be excited. Be like, bro, I can't wait to see it. And the next day that I get to school after I drop a story, people would be like, yo, that was funny. Like, mm-hmm. yo, that part was funny. It was mad funny. So it's like, I kind of learned how to do stand up and also like create hype and create promotion there. And then um, I didn't know what I wanted to do in in college, I yeah. want to do. Wait, so what were yeah? What were you there for before you started going to the comedy, doing the comedy and stuff like that? Doing, I started comedy in college. Like I didn't, I didn't do any play crafters. Oh. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't doing theater in high school. <laughs> Neither was I. Yeah, I, I, that's why I, I was just kind of funny a little bit. Yeah, but no, I started. No, those were dorks. I started the like yeah. So I, those things were dorks. Yeah. They go, oh, you want to you come see my performance of Joseph in the Technicolor coat? Like, no, I'm going to go see LeBron dunk over <laughs> dunk over TJ Ford. That's what yeah, I want to do. That's you pretty know? Vibe. Um But, yeah, I, st- I started that in high school. I wasn't, I wasn't really uh, exposed to anything other than that. Um, and when I got to college, I wanted to do international business. I didn't. I knew I didn't want to sit behind a desk, you mm-hmm. know, doing something. So I said, "Yo, fuck it, you know, let's let's just do this theater thing because it's it's in the realm of stand up or comedy." Okay. Um, and I did that. And when I got to college, there was a comedy club on campus. You know, kids who you know came together did improv, stand up, and stuff like that. And it was fairly new. What was it called? A uh, laugh club. Okay, mine was called Thirty and Sixty. 30, that was uh, that was where 60? I started. Yeah, we did like thirty. The the whole concept was like improv sketches, and you got to try to do. 30 sketches in 60 minutes to beat okay. the timer for the audience. Oh, I was a little confused. I was about to say that's the <laughs> ratio for like a Wagyu burger, too. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if y'all think it was for cooking up sketches or cooking up burgers. I didn't know. Yo, everybody in there was vegan and fucking, and, and I told you, we were doing kava bars and shit. Like, I was the only person in there eating meat, bro. I was the only person fucking up bacon, fucking up everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, y'all niggas had to take breaks between zip, zap, zap because niggas were dehydrated. <laughs> Yo, zip, zap, zap, bro. <laughs> oh, that's niggas a whole other life. More electrolytes to do that game. That's a whole other life, bro. Yes. Oh, that's crazy. I remember playing that, um, and that just sparked your your creativity. And like people on campus were were rocking yeah, with what you had yeah, going on. And there was a, there was my friend JD Gardner who he was kind of like into improv and stand up, and he was like, "Yo, you know," he was encouraging me. Yo, you should do stand up. I was like, "I've never done it before." Went to that open mic and it went like better than I expected. You know, really? I probably looking back on it, I probably fucking bombed. Do you have the video? I think I have parts of it. Yeah, okay, have okay. parts of it. I, I still have my first video. It definitely was horrible. It, wasn't it was like- horrible. And I, and I was also I was I didn't know how to dress back then, so I was also <laughs> shaved. <in> my- <laughs> yeah. When did you learn how to dress? This is a good time because I be trying to find men's fashion. I be I was on Sheen the other week. That, the girl that's also in my up. algorithm. Okay, like Sheen, a boohoo man. I, I'll hook you up after this. Okay, bad. Sheen, boohoo man, all that shit. Like I learned how to dress. My brothers had like a good sense of style. Yeah. Not good sense of shoe style. Okay. You know, it was, it was a lot of boots. You know, you would mm. think niggas were army brats. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they had a good sense of, like, matching what. And my brother, you the know. Colors. He's, yeah, he's conservative now. He like Henley. He like Henley. He's like, <laughs> you know, he like Chelsea boots and shit like that. But, yeah. no, I need, some, I need a little flair. You know, especially when I step on stage. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to be funny. You want people to look at you. So, really just, like, learning from my boy, Dell, who knows how to dress. But, like, just looking at shit. Like, looking at pop culture. See what's popping yeah. off. Like, and I'm I not, bet being in New York would probably help influence oh, yeah, that yeah, a little yeah. bit, being, too. Being, I'm, I mean, you got niggas from Oklahoma's, you know, wearing Doc Martens. And wearing, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And, and, you know, and wearing bell bottoms and thinking it's cool. It's like, bro, it's not, it's not Lizzie McGuire, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is 2022. Put on appropriate pair of pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like motherfuckers be coming out looking like it's 2004. Like, oh, no, my we, God, bro. We, 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 you look like you're about to vote for Bush. What That's you the doing, son? That's the aesthetic they're yeah. working on. <laughs> uh, but, like, no, just just looking at, like, you know, cats like uh, Russell Westbrook or, mm. like, Kevin Hart. Okay. Like, they have, like, great style. You, yeah. know, you take from that, you make an amalgamation of all that shit, and you're like, okay, that's how I learned how to dress. So, like, make a what? Amalgamation. Like all a right. mixture. Hey, my fault. Hey, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry they, they clap it. I they forgot clap it. I was in Jacksonville. <laughs> We can't use words hey, over man. certain syllables. I've never seen that word in any of our of our public county school system books. Yeah. <laughs> never. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, a library can't afford to have the word that big in one of its books. You can't come down here and use the words like yeah, amalgamation, so, bro. My fault. This motherfucker think I'm talking hieroglyphics up here. Oh, man. But you're a fly dude, man. And, yeah, and, and I tried. You, you, you weren't overdoing it. That's definitely like, I went through a phase where I was overdoing the fly, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was yeah. throwing too many colors on. Trying to make it match because the, the, shoe, the shoe got a red stripe, so I was trying to put a little like a red shawl yeah, over some, the jacket. Yeah, it wasn't some really. that don't know how to. Yeah, you look, I did. I learned now. I'm calm yeah, now. I mean, you probably if someone took a picture, you look like a background dancer in Thriller. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> it, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, uh, dude, with Michael Jackson. Do you have a picture of your worst fit ever in your mind right now? Uh, bro, it's just like 
for me, I always like shoes. So mm-hmm. if the shoes were clean, mm-hmm. I thought that validated the rest. Okay. Okay. Oh, you thought it could overcome. So I had some Air Force 95, you okay. know, Navy, you know, a little bit of gray in it, clean, fresh. Mm-hmm. And then I would throw on like a, you know, a green top. <laughs> yeah. I have a green That's top crazy. with some like, you know, with some washed gray jeans. <laughs> I'm like, yo, yeah, this fits. So, like, people look at me like, yo, is this nigga colorblind? That's wild, bro. Uh, but like, you shit. know, going going throughout, you know, and also be, me being, I was chunky when I was little, so okay. I didn't really expect any like uh, certain attention from ladies. Mm. So that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that. Well, yeah, you wouldn't think that now. But the people who've been in the darkest place always rise to the light. It's ah, you know, when you've it. been in a dark place for so long, you can only go up. Oh, you know what? You know? This brother's preaching. Yeah, preaching exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to T.D. Jakes and Friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, you learn that. You know, you, a, lot of people, a lot of people aren't born a certain way. You know, they, they're usually on the outskirts or mm-hmm. they're usually outcasts and they, they observe. That's one thing that's good about me. I observe. I look at shit. You know, I come from a family of cops, so, you know, always knowing your surroundings is very good. Mm. And you get to learn. That benefits not only your safety, but, you it's know, the rest of your life. paranoid club. Ex- always, exactly. always looking over the shoulder, no exactly. matter where you at. Exactly. You, you, Why do you, you think I walk so much on stage? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you weren't moving around. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I walk left was right. going crazy. Just in case a motherfucker come up from me upstage, no one's going to Chris Rock me, nigga. Oh, that's for sure. That's hilarious, man. That's you never hilarious. know, especially this club. You know, I see a couple <laughs> people smoking outside, grilling burgers um, on the outside of the motel. Like, they're not upstanding yeah. citizens. We did have one lady try to jump on stage. Afion Crockett was here, uh, and he was talking about he did some joke about white. A white lady literally ran on stage from over there. Oh, that was t- here. Yeah, it went viral. Oh, TMZ posted I remember that. it. I remember it was that. crazy. Well, it's appropriate for the city. <laughs> it's very appropriate for Jacksonville. I mean, this whole city looks like a perpetual episode oh. of True Detective. Oh my god. <laughs> Y'all ain't got nothing but like oaks and like pines and nah, shit like that. Listen, the city looks beautiful on the top of the bridges. If you're going over some bridges, Nigga, the, the city, city looks beautiful from Google Maps. <laughs> that's what you meant to say. Yeah. All right. There's a certain angle and that's in space where you can't breathe. That's that's exactly where Jacksonville looks nice from. For sure. Oh man. All right. So <clears throat> coming out of New York, are uh, you when did your comedy career start taking you out of the the open mic circuit and you learning, okay, I got something here. Let me let me start working in these places. Yeah, so I've always, um, it was kind of hard because I graduated college in 2019. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, damn, you said that like you didn't believe that I could. <laughs> no, nah, I, I dropped out. I ain't finished that shit. Oh, you dropped I, out? I was doing comedy and radio. I thought I was going to be a radio millionaire. Oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell that you dropped out by the way you're wearing your hat. So <laughs> You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never wearing hats again because it it's, it's done now. They over with. Anything that has his hat all backwards like that, fully strapped, it's just like there's something... <laughs> There's some things that this nigga did not finish in life. One of them is probably going to be education. Hey, man, I got, I got, I got, I got education elsewhere. Elsewhere, we'll figure it out. <laughs> no, but I, I finished college in like 2019. I graduated, came out. I was doing Uber because I wanted to be flexible. You know, mm. trying to get my foot into comedy, and doing that. You know, wait com- a second, wait a second. You did Uber to be flexible? Yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying now. I thought I thought you meant you needed Uber to get into comedy. Oh no 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 no! Like for the hours. For Got the, it. Yeah, for Got the it. hours. Got it. Okay. Uh, so you know, you do. If I wanted to work like uh, two to eight, I could, and then I go to the city afterwards. Cause I live. I live in the suburbs, like forty five minutes outside the city. Mm. So I was doing that. You know, I was connecting myself with people. You know, I was going to like DC, doing like bringer shows and shit like that. Uh, you know, doing the open mic circuit, and then you know, COVID happened. Mm-hmm. And as I said, I came from Vine, so I was always like very, you know, internet mode, savvy. Internet savvy. So I was doing sketches. <laughs> And I, I kind of like rose to prominence there and like kind of COVID kind of opened back up. And then I was doing a show and I met my two friends, my boys now, Talent Harris and Julio Diaz, which those are my guys. Like those, those are my like brothers, like Talent Harris, his father's talent, uh, talent, you know, the okay. comedian, you okay. know. Any rela- are y'all, y'all not related, are you, or are you just? Me and Talent? Yeah. No, 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 just no. Li- okay. ha- no my, la- my, my last name is Harvin. He's okay. Harris. Got yeah. it, got it. But Talent comes from a lineage, like his father's, you know, did Def Jam, Apollo Theater. Oh, you wow. Know, like, Hell yeah. He's one of the original kings of comedy for New York. Yeah. Him, got Rob it. Stapleton, Capone, Mark Vieira, and Julio Diaz, bro, he's he's a monster. Like, he did uh, Netflix is a Joke, the festival. Like, oh, really? Like, okay, hell yeah. Basically, their version of JFL. Shout out to them. I got to meet him then. Yeah, basically their version of, of JFL for New Faces. He did that. Um, he's killing. And I met them 
And after I met them, I realized that they were the only ones doing content during that time in COVID. Like everybody else was just posting tweets, like, you know, low res pictures of them doing stand up, mm. you know, and thinking that they're so cool because their grandmother liked it. <laughs> and I was like, I want to do a little bit more, you know, so I linked up with them. We were doing sketches, and once we did that, like, we, like, the whole community loved it. People love it. And this we is 2020? It. This is, like, yeah, 2020. What's one of your, your favorite sketches that y'all have done together, created together? Uh, Probably the first one we ever did, because I didn't know how it was going to go. What was it? Uh, it was about, uh, so my friend, so my friend Julio, <laughs> my friend Julio was trying to talk to a girl, and he said, hey, how are you? And she wasn't feeling him, so mm -hmm. she walks past. And my okay. talent comes out, and he goes, hey, how are you? And she's into him. They talk, and Julio pulls him to the side. He goes, yo, bro, you stole my line? <laughs> okay. He goes, what? He's what? like, hey, how are you? He's like, oh, yeah, bro, I've been working all that shit for like five years. <laughs> so I come in as her cousin. I go, okay. hey, you ready? hey, you ready to go to the dinner? He goes, yo, you fucking stole my line, bro. Yo, how, how'd, you, how'd you say that differently, though? Like, let me know how you did yeah. it to work for you. So that was, like, the first one. It was, like, dumb and stupid, but, like, we've done tons of other ones. You know, we've collaborated with comedians in New York City, but we were doing that. And then when that was happening, uh, Giannis had a podcast with Chris, Step Chris Stepno called History Hyenas. Okay. That ended, and he started his own podcast called Long Days. And during that time, he had a thing called Comment Roulette. So he would go live when he would re record the episode, and he would, like, look down in his phone on Instagram Live and whatever comment that he saw, he would read. Okay. So that was on every Wednesdays. I was off on Wednesdays and every time I would try to like drop a comment, you know, drop a comment, talk yeah. to people, drop a comment. And I dropped one and it, it, he like laughed. He did. It, he was like, "Yo, this kid's funny." And I kept on doing that over and over and over. Hell, and over pitching, and over again. putting jokes up and, yeah, putting and jokes. And then one time, I was like, uh, "Yo, bro, like you should let me come out. You should let me feature for you." He's like, "Yeah, bro, we'll get something done." And then he didn't respond. And then I sent him, like, one of my sketches that he did. He was like, oh, you're a comic. That makes sense. And then uh, one time in a live, I was like, yo, you're going to Baltimore. Let me feature for you. Mm. He was like, yo, bro, we'll set it up. You'll come. Hell yeah. You're putting yourself out there, exactly. man. Exactly. Exactly. And, and the then game. right after that, I, I sent one joke. I think it was... Uh, Aquafina was under fire because she got like speculation from like basically doing a black song. Yeah. A black okay. I remember. Song. I remember. Yeah. And I had a joke. I was like... You know, it's very funny. Asians can't copy the blacks, uh, but when the blacks copy the Asians, you can do it because it's about homework. <laughs> you know, like when it's, when it's, it's vice versa funny. when it comes to homework. That's funny. And he was like, oh, that's funny. So we went, so he brought me in for an episode. We did like a, a, a long day's episode. That was dope. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we went to Magoobies and to Modium. That was dope. And then after a while, he was like, yo, come in. He was like, yo, come in. We'll have you on the show. And we did that. And, um, I was off camera for a little bit. Like, I was just doing commentary. Then mm -hmm. he put me on camera. And now, like, we have, we do a Patreon episode, just you, uh, him and me. Uh, we have a news episode that we release uh, weekly, and now I'm doing it, man. And Congratulations, now, bro. Yeah, that, bro. That's that's definitely the the the, the hustle, the game. Like, the put hustle. yourself out there. You got to make a spot for yourself in this game. You have know? to. Like it's only way open. Like I told you, like what you're doing now, like being self sufficient, doing your own thing, it's so important because no one wants to rock with somebody that you know that has their hand out. Yeah, yeah. You got to you got to offer something. You know, I I, pro I provide I provide something that balance for him. You know, uh, a relevancy. You know, and keeping him up on things, and he provides the balance of experience and just being funny. Yeah, you know. Being able to learn from and chill out. learn from, but like, you know, I met so many people. Like, I, I met for just for the exposure, I've had like, you know, Josh Peck slide yeah. my DMs. Yo, like, yo, I saw that video on, yeah. uh, on an Instagram. Yo, he, shout out That's Josh Peck, man. He's a big fan. He's like, yo, bro, you're hilarious. You're talented. I went out to LA. You know, I met him. Hell you yeah. Know, we, That's we, dope as fuck. We kicked it for a little bit. He came to New York. He did the pod, and then we did that sketch, you know, and like just meeting comedians, you know, like Whitney Cummings was very yeah. nice to me. That's like, the funnest thing to me. Meeting comedians, I think it's fun. It, 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 That's like the best life. It's dope. It's, it's so dope. It's 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 like just so dope to see like how many different types of people who don't deserve fame get it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Could you be talking? To, this, you be guy talking says, to some, this guy says what you're thinking. <laughs> you be talking to some people like 20 minute conversations, and they have not made eye contact with you once. Bro, yeah. And there's nobody else in the room, and their phone is dead. Yeah. It's like either you have Asperger's or you're an <laughs> asshole. Like, it's, it's there's very, definitely plenty of people who you meet where you're like, they have no social skills. No like, it's social just like, skills at what, all. You're just, you're just a robot. <laughs> you're just a robot. You know. Either that or you you take after Elon Musk too much. Yeah. Uh, Cause that that guy, I mean Elon is just like you talking to that motherfucker. Yeah. Like 
Straight up, no, no. Con- he tries to be funny on Twitter. It doesn't land. He uh, he fucking walked in with that sink in his hand the walked day that he bought the sink. Was like, that was, you tried too hard. I was like, nigga, oh, leave that to Carrot Top, nigga. Nobody else, <laughs> nobody else walks in with a sink. Like, we, we, you not a prop comic, nigga. You, Gallagher died two oh, weeks ago, my bro. God, bro. Um, uh. but yeah, bro. Just just this life. Just me being, you know, because I, I know comics in my class mm. who are back in New York. They don't, they don't have the privilege of, they're not doing what I'm doing. You know, mm. I'm getting so much experience now, you know. Um, I'm <clears> fortunate I don't, I don't have a day job now because, you know, the podcast, you know, touring. Hell is yeah. Me. So I want to take advantage I'm of working all, on all these opportunities, you yeah. know. That's the thing, bro. Like, like uh, I want to, at, le- at least, like, obviously, you, you know, you work, you work, you work. I love getting opportunities and then knocking that bitch off the park the first time, bro. Yeah. Like that is a that's the big thing, man. I, I did. That's that's very important. And just like you know, showing yourself that you can do it. Mm-hmm. But also, what's more important, even if you don't knock it out the park, give it all your effort. Yeah, you know, because when you give effort, it shows that you care. Yeah, and even if it doesn't go good, the fact that you care will make you want to retry it and you even do it properly. Keep putting stuff out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like I said, we're on episode number eighty today, so I'm I'm excited to have you here, yeah. bro, and, and get to meet you. Um, you talked about your family and your set a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. How do they come into play in your comedy career, man? They the supportive was it rocking all the way through? It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't certain at first mm. like when i went to college and, and uh i declared the theater major my dad was like how is this nigga gonna make money <laughs> okay because i come from a family like i come from a lot of cops you know my yeah. brother my, my brother my father they were all expecting uncle, you to do that oh they were no they weren't expecting it like i was always like dramatic as a kid but like you know when you come from a family of niggas who have money and have pensions okay and guaranteed money yeah you, they want you to have guaranteed yeah. money. And I would assume they're they're tough, muscly. I don't know, work out or something. Like, I don't know what. Not, no, they're not tough and muscly. Okay. No, well, not all. They, they big, but not for muscles. Okay, okay. You, you know, um, you know, the metabolism slows down when you get a little older. <laughs> Let, let's just say that. Okay. But uh, no, you know, you, when you come from a family, you, your parents or the ones who come before you never want you to fail, mm-hmm. and they, they never want you to do worse than you did than they did. So it's like they want you to strive for your dreams, but also don't have a plan B. So having a having a, a system that comes from like you know my father was like yo you know do this theater thing but also you know if you if you need to take the take the test take the yeah. police test or have like a a civil service test or the like sanitation is dope always want to have good benefits like no matter what a family of ethnic people <laughs> they want you to have good benefits yes like nigga i don't care it's a loving family right yeah, there. i don't care this and that reach for your dreams but nigga if you break your arm i'm not paying for it you got to have coverage for yourself you know yeah so that was the concern, but, like, once my dad came, he saw, like, plays that I did. You know, I I did, like, uh, Romeo and Juliet. I was Romeo in college. Oh, shit. Okay. You know, I was, I was, I did Raisin in the Sun. I was Walter. Not by choice, because I didn't have a lot of black people where I went to school. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you, can't, you can't have Kyle Rittenhouse playing yeah. Walter. Um, but I did shit like That's that. Crazy. You know, I went to, uh, I got elected to go to Irene Ryan's, which is, like, the uh, the Kennedy Center a festival for colleges you know kennedy center is very prestigious with arts in mm-hmm. uh, dc i got to do that and he saw the stand-up and he was like yo this is this is dope you know my mom she always told me i want you to sh- try for your dreams because i want you to do better than i did yeah. you know, my mom went to community college you know bounced around from job worked in the city at some business work met my dad you know she bounced around from i saw my mom do everything like realtor she was you know she was in debt collection she worked in uh you know another debt collection place and now <laughs> she you know she works in the airlines now but she bounced around she didn't really have a solid career yeah. so my family was like yo just them just seeing do you do this yeah just 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 do it because like you know they they see that i have something and they want me to do it my brother wanted to be an actor you mm. know didn't really work out too much yeah you know are y'all really like that apart in age like that yeah wow yeah Yeah, my brother is 36 wow okay you know know, and that's why like i'm very fortunate because i get to i'm I'm a little bit more calm around older people okay like you know i'm hanging out with Giannis. i i'm not just like oh yo what is this motherfucker talking about (laughs) this is six times this nigga brought up c-span like what is this nigga like i worked at a miller's ale house for like uh like maybe two Two weeks at most, and they uh, so many old people. You just see Sorry. who hates old people and who can Sorry. just deal with it. Sometimes you have to sit down and have a ten minute conversation about high blood pressure. <laughs> so, sometimes that ha- you, you got to do that shit, but like, you be like, sir, your oxygen tank, I think it's coming apart behind yeah, you. you yeah, gotta, like, I want to fix that. Yeah, this. <laughs> 
Sometimes you just gotta hang out with a nigga that cares about his O2 level. You know? <laughs> that that's that's just what that if you wanna make it in this business, that's what you gotta do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my brothers are older and I'm more much more comfortable around older people. And my brother, he always wanted to be an actor. You know, he tried it, you know, he he went to auditions, but you know, then again, he you know, he went to college for, you know, psychology or sociology and he became a cop, you know. He did NYPD and now he's out by me in Suffolk County. He's a sergeant, he's very successful. But you know, he he always said, Oh, chase your dreams, bro. Do what you want to do. Yeah. My other brother, he was a chef. He was kinda like the same thing, like my other brother went to Johnson and Wales. And he was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go down to Carolina, open up a, a restaurant. My family was like, yo, great, great, yeah. dope. And he was like, yo, James, how much money did you save up? He was like, $200. We were like, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, you can't, <laughs> you can't go down there. Nigga. Open up a mall booth. Nigga went down there with a Hyundai hatchback, <laughs> packed to the top, talking about, yeah, $200. I said, nigga, that's not going to even get you to New Jersey and gas money. Like, Oh, man. But that, oh, that, wow. that type of passion, like I took that from my brother. You yeah. know, I took the vision. And, you know, the you got to be logical in this situation. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's why I was, you know, I was working at Amazon. But, you know, I feel like some type of um, calling, kind of like being the youngest one. In your are, you, are you the youngest? In yeah, your yeah, yeah, I'm the youngest one. The youngest is usually always the most successful because they could see, like, mm -hmm. you know, the... the I'm on y'all ass. Exa ex exactly. See, <laughs> what were y'all niggas doing? You know, what was what, your dad do? What was your mom do? Uh, my mom is a CNA, like, nurse. And mm -hmm. then... Um, I, I don't know what honestly don't know what he does. My dad does. I don't know. Is he in your life? No, not like that. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought she just thought that this nigga's dad was an FBI agent. I oh didn't know. no, not, so, no, okay. nothing secret. Okay. It's nothing secret. Okay. I really just don't know. Just, <laughs> I just, I'm not. I just, you don't. You not only know his job, you just don't know his identity. <laughs> you don't know what this. You don't know this nigga's social security number. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I, I yeah. thought it was like, yeah, you know, my no, dad. I was, I was not being funny, I thought bro. It was just a situation. Yeah, my dad just works late nights. <laughs> like, no, no, yeah. My dad went to work one day and didn't come back. It's like, what you do for work? That ain't none of your business, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> that just catch you asking questions. Nah, nah, nah. I really just don't know. I, my mom was she raised me, my brother, and my sister for most of most of our lives, yeah. and, and handled a business working in uh, CNA nursing homes, hospitals, and stuff like that. Shout out to black women, man. Hell yeah, they do it. They they do it the most, you know. Trevor but uh, but they fuck with uh with my comedy career now. You know what I mean? Like uh, like I dropped out of college to pursue stuff like this. Uh -huh. So at first it, it was the same. It was like uh you know it's like okay, well what are you gonna do? But I've always been the kind of person to at least like even if it don't go how I have it, I have some type of plan. Exactly. That plan involves chaos. Yeah. <laughs> that plan involves you know some, some unorganized a lot of a lot of fall where they may, and then I'm gonna pick up the pieces. But yeah. that's always been my mindset. I've been like, okay, let it happen. I'll build it up again from there because my history shows me I could do it. And then they've been coming out to this show. I've been doing uh, running around with this place for the last year or so. Mm -hmm. They first ever comedy show they got to see me do was four years into my career. So like like this last year or whatever and uh, it was here at this place so they're rocking with me now it's a lot of fun shout out to them they listen to almost every episode of the show so you know they'll be meeting you in, in, in a way kind of listen through it yeah. feel like that yeah yeah i think that's 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 so important you know you don't have a lot of people who are you know as supportive of that but like that type of mentality that you got a lot of comics have because i don't i don't want to i don't want to do anything else yeah you know if i have Brothers to try. I, I will I, like, I, like i said in college like I'll sit behind a desk if I have to, nigga. Mm. But I'll be damned. I'll be damned if I didn't yeah. try. Bro, I went to community college, and the only classes I took seriously before I dropped out was creative improv and then film, that's like it. His, history of film. That's the only thing I took seriously, and then everything else I was, I was, I'm, like, I'm gonna go get that's some food, it. and that's hard to do. At I'm a gonna community go write college. some jokes. Yeah, <laughs> that's hard to do at community college because that film class was just you at home watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> did it? <laughs> Niggas didn't have a budget dead for that ass, shit. Yeah. Dead ass, bro. Dead ass, man. But that, that's the, that's the thing, bro. Like, there's nothing else, and I don't want to do. If you know, again, if I have to be a sanitation, if I have to give good benefits, okay. But I tried, yeah. you know. But even me trying, I'm not gonna let it fail because I love it too much, yeah. you know. And there's too much, there's too much to do. There's too much to tap into, like as a comic, especially. Yeah. Like nigga, like we said this last time, nigga. nigga Steve Harvey is a judge now. Nigga, nigga. He's literally everything, bro. The nigga who can't read a card <laughs> for Miss America. The, the male nigga, Fantasia. The nigga who can't give out a judgment is giving out judgments. <laughs> How Wait, did you let that happen? He literally confused. What was that modeling show? A Miss America. What was? It was like yeah, Miss Brazil and Nicaragua. Or what are the teams that are in the World Cup or some shit right. like that? 
he he messed up the name and said, "Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Bro, my mustache got in the way." From the kings of comedy to to banging gabbles to to goddamn banging family gabbles. feud. There is no if that nigga can become a judge, yeah. bro. I even said like Donald Glover, bro. Uh, uh, him coming from from weirdo to and like writing yeah, TV yeah. scripts and shit like that. To, that's, that but that's the most perfect example. Even like Jamie Fox, like oh I have. Oh my god, bro. Those are my those are my guys Shout because you know they they showed you. That there is no limit to what you can do. Granted, granted, I mean, some of them, they're blessed with talent. You know, Jamie can sing. But, like, even Donald, he said, yo, a yeah. lot of people told me that I couldn't make a neo-soul funk album. Yeah. He was like, yo, fuck y'all, I'll do it. And, then, <laughs> and that's why it. he made Awaken My Love, which, you know, all Pop. those Grammys. Crazy. You know, so yeah. it's like, there, there's no limitation in this game. And what, you, do you, uh, what do you, well, what's something that you would like to do for your own, like, some, your own personal dream, man? Something you want to work on later on, like movies, TV oh, dog, shows? I want to be, like, I want to be everything that, you know, uh, Kevin is. Mm. Minus the cheating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, black man don't cheat. The new black man, the, the new generation it's of black men don't cheat. Yeah, ge- Generation Z don't cheat. <laughs> yeah, Sean I don't know about, I don't about these Kevin millennial Hart. niggas, these, these Generation X niggas, yeah, but these, yeah. these niggas don't cheat. <laughs> the ones who started the foundation in media, they fucked up, but we yeah, are. We yeah, are. that's the sacrifice they got to take, you know? <laughs> yeah. They walk so I can run. I was telling you, uh, I saw Kevin here at the arena not too long ago, man. I was just taking notes, bro. I'm, I'm sitting up. First of all, I'm up in the nosebleeds. Mm-hmm. That's why I started. But then, I, you know, obviously I walked around and moved places and yeah, shit. people thought you were but Security. Hey, hey, you know, not even, not even. They just weren't even asking. People weren't even. That was. They just weren't even asking who I was. I was just walking around that place. Um, was, oh, this nigga has a backwards hat on. He's definitely a graduate. <laughs> Yo, He's, not a <laughs> He's not a threat. He's not a threat. Uh, this nigga's obviously a struggling comic. He dropped out of college to do this. <laughs> Let him through. <laughs> uh, I was just taking notes, man. Like, yeah, I think that's a good. Uh, that's a good thing. So, uh, like, you want to just do everything that you know, movies. Yeah, man. Being put in position to. I want. I want to have versatility. Yeah. You know, I want to be able to come to Jacksonville at the Comedy Zone. You know, crack up the yeah. room, bro. You rocked out last night. Yeah, you rocked out it was, yesterday. It was fun. Thursday was great too. Um, I missed. Thursday. I was at my day job serving tables and shit. But I should have. I should have called nah, out. And nah, just came nah, up nah, here. That's nah, all right. You know, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes you got to do a little sacrifice. Yeah. You know, can't yeah. have no sugar without no spice. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know? could, you were definitely raised by old people. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga, did you what? I don't know where I came from, honestly. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. So it's, I, it might be the South because I had. Uh, <laughs> I'm falling apart here. That was crazy, bro. <laughs> So I know I know I'm a little bit older, but like that's the South rubbing off on me. I'm not gonna lie to you. I had some, that was crazy. <laughs> I had some biscuits and gravy earlier, so that Southern hospitality is uh, rubbing off on me. You're right though. I'm not saying you're you wrong, yeah, but I was you know, not expecting that. Yeah, I could have phrased that a little bit differently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, but I no, I want to be a brother that's just you're versatile. You know, I want to be. I want to surprise people. Mm-hmm. Like again, I want to kill on stage, but also I want to like you know. Go through Broadway and give like you know a, a Tony Award winning dramatic performance. Mm. You know, yeah. I, I want to have that versatility. Where it's like, yo, that dude, that dude, he can do anything. You yeah, know? he's just a performer. He's a totally gifted person. I think you got it, bro. Like you, like you definitely got it. Like, well, I just met you this weekend, but yeah. but uh, I looked at your content all on, on, and I definitely, you know, you've been building from the early stages of it, seeing it up. Yeah. Like, like obviously writing those sketches in itself is it's like like. What we're doing now is kind of just teaching ourselves everything exactly. to, to, to learn for when it's time to mass produce it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's what I I'm in a phase of just learning for myself right now. I'm not in a phase of, of trying to acquire mass audience. You know, that'll come. That'll, that'll work on it. But you got to build up a little you bit, gotta, you know? Yeah, you got to be proficient to a certain level. You're like, no one's going to... See, what well, the thing about it is, like, I always use Kevin Hart in his example. Like, a lot of people, a lot of people view Kevin Hart earlier in his career. You're like, yo, Kevin Hart was a nobody. Mm. Like no one knew Kevin Hart But then when you think about it You go yo Kevin Hart was in like Scary Movie 3 Or yes. Kevin Hart had Soul Plane mm. Any iconic scenes in both those movies Many iconic scenes And you're like You think a studio who's spending a certain amount of chunk of change on a movie Is just gonna give a role A leading role To a nobody To a nothing burger yeah. nigga Yeah Somebody they don't believe in Yeah like, you, you had to put in so much work. You had to prove yourself so much just to get that little bit of recognition. Yeah, like, yeah. Scary Movie 3, he was, like, you know, the, <laughs> the sidekick. He was getting railed out by Anthony Anderson. 20 just, seconds. Just to get emasculated on yeah. that level. You had, to, you had to be so big to a certain level. So I go, yo, bro, you got to be on your shit for people to even give you a glance. Yeah. You know? 
Like a lot of people, some people are starting to know me now. Like, you know, it's it's dope. Like I'm on the podcast, you know. Giannis released a special. I'm introducing a special. You know, some people know me now, but I'm I'm an afterthought. Like mm. no one's thinking about me. Yeah, you well, yeah because unless, like uh, unless it's like real com- like when you go down to Austin, like real comedy niggas they fuck with it because because there's like a lot of younger dudes like Derek Poston, mm. Asan, uh, Asan, you know Brian Simpson or like Hans Kim, all those dudes who got big off of like you know Kill Tony, like the real comedy mm-hmm. people. Yeah, when you go down to Austin, they go, "Yo, bro, I fuck with you" because they're real comedy yeah. fans. They love to see the melding of the next up. That's but beautiful. It, it, that's like, beautiful. But, but it's crazy. You don't you don't get that every time that you meet a comedian, man. You but you do get some people who just love the next generation of comics, yes, bro. Yes. And those are the ones who are like, damn, I, I I'm locking in, bro. Like we we here, I fuck with you, I rock with you. Yeah. You know what I have to say? Like, it's great it's great to see like older comics like that, especially older black men. Because like in New York, New York is so crazy. I mean, the game is just so crazy now because I feel like a lot of I don't. I don't really believe in like racism, racism too much because I don't want to put racism as an excuse as to why I can't do something. Okay. You know? But I'm totally aware mm. that it. Like you know, I was held up by uh, a cop with a gun for trying to get out of a parking lot. You know. Mm, shit. So on Long Island, like I yeah. get it. I understand it. I, I. You know, my father told me if you ever get pulled over by a cop and you hand him you, the PBA card I give you and he tells you to sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up, you do exactly what he says because mm. your life matters first. I get all that. But in in New York. It's kind of predicated as like the black men or black people don't give any chances first because they feel like it's a white orientated game, mm. and if they get a if they get a chance, it's like a once in a lifetime thing. Really? And if they see any new that's a, blood, that's kind of a toxic thing that we have in our community bit, all the time. Yeah. A little bit, and if new blood comes up, it's like oh shit, they're threatening my spot because there's not a lot of spots for me. For my color anyway. Bro. So you kind of become gatekeeperish or kind of like standoffish. Older that cops sucks. do that. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But like when I went to LA, I went to LA with Giannis. We were doing podcasts out there and I, we did Tim Dillon's show, mm. Tim Dillon and Friends. And it was like a nice lineup like Sarah Tiana, David Spade, you know, Trevor Wallace. Um, and he was uh, Tim, Brian Simpson came in. Very cool Netflix and everything. Shout out like to Brian. That. Yeah, Shout I was watching the special one though. Brian came in. He was like, yo, yo, man, you going up? I was like, I, I don't know. I looked at Tim. Yeah, you know, Tim's good friends with Giannis, and it was like, it was like, yeah, 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 we'll get you up. Yeah, yeah. no problem. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I like, I, I like Tim because Tim, Tim talked like he ate wasabi and he didn't know it was wasabi. <laughs> he was like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah it's hot, it's hot in here. Yeah, we'll get you I up watched here. Tim yeah. at the theater not long ago yeah. out here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I liked him. He was like, yeah, so we going up, and Trevor Wallace was going to come. So Trevor Wallace asked for my um, credits because it's the comedy store to do past the mic. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right. And I hear David Spade. David Spade's sitting down, crisscross applesauce because the nigga's small enough to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's sitting down, he's looking on his phone, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, me and Chris were out here working on stuff. You know, it's, I thought he was supposed to come. He didn't come. I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't think, I mean, think anything of it. Yeah. So then I see this dude barreling down the door. He comes and he whispers in Tim's ear, and Tim's like, yeah, yeah, he can come in if he wants to. So I don't, I don't know who he's talking about. So I'm out there watching Trevor. I'm about to go up, I'm sitting there watching. And then I feel like a breeze behind me. Yeah. One oh, lower, shit. like one lower yeah. by my elbow, and then one massive, like there's a big massive fucking massive. Okay, like me. something's by me, something's yes. standing there. And I look back, and I see one of the biggest niggas I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but then in front of that nigga, I see one of the most smallest niggas I've ever seen in my life. And this nigga has a beanie that's off to the side, oh, and wow. he's dressed well. And I go, hey, that's Kevin Hart. Oh, shit. So Kevin Hart wow. walks in there, he's talking to everybody, Kurt Metzger and everybody. Mm. He's going, yo, yo, what's up, what's up? And he's like, yeah, can I go up? And Tim's like, yeah, yeah, you can go up. I was like, oh, that's the dude that the guy was talking about before. Mm. So I'm like, okay. So Tim goes, yeah, yeah, Jared, Kevin comes up. He'll go up. He'll bring you up. I'm like, oh, shit. Shit. Nigga, my first time at the comedy <laughs> store, y'all niggas gonna do this to me like this? That's crazy. Damn. That's crazy. So I'm like, damn, shit. I'm like, shit. I'm pacing around like, oh, fuck. I'm like, ah, oh, Kevin's gonna kill it. Probably gonna do like 20. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. So I'm pacing. I'm walking. Nigga, I'm doing push ups and shit. Yeah, in the back that's why. Like that. I'm well, sweating. You see, nigga, do a push up behind yeah, the stage. <laughs> nigga, I'm doing push ups at a comedy store. Nigga, that's a haunted ass place, too. Yeah. The ghosts are looking at me like, hey, what's this nigga doing? Like, it's a comedy store, nigga, not Orange Theory. Yeah. So I'm doing push ups and everything like that. And I'm pacing. I'm sitting. I finally sit down and then I feel another presence. Someone bumps me on my shoulder. I'm like, all right, yo. I felt one presence. Don't don't bump into me like that again. I turn around and say something, nigga. It's Chris Rock. Oh shit. Oh my god. It's Chris nigga, Rock. That's crazy. It's Chris Rock sitting there watching, like listening to Kevin, all excited. He's like, oh, excuse me, man. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. He's sitting there. He's watching him. So then Tim comes out again. Yeah, Jared. Yeah, so Kevin, go up. Chris, go up. Yeah, yeah, Chris, <laughs> you gotta go. Chris will bring you up. I'm like, 
Fuck. <laughs> Kevin goes up, does great. Chris goes up, does great. And Chris is about to bring me up now. And Tim goes, all right, you're good. And Tim goes back in the room. Before he comes out, before, right after he comes out, Brian Simpson comes out. And he goes, listen, bro, I probably ain't going to tell you this because you probably already know this. But whenever you go on after someone who's bigger than you, you got to announce their presence, nigga. Yeah, nigga, because you got to announce their presence because they don't want to see you. Yeah. They don't want to see yeah. you. They want to see more of the person. So you got to announce their presence in some way, nigga. And I knew he was a real dude because my boy, Michael Anthony Scott, who was Moxie approved on YouTube, go check him out. He told me the same thing, and he's very, like, black eccentric, you know, you know, black pride. He was like, yo, if you ever, you know, follow someone big, you got to acknowledge their presence. So I was very grateful for Ryan Simpson for telling yeah. me that, you know, because that was he didn't have to do that. Yeah. He was just chilling, talking to people in the green room. He came out specifically for me because he knew the situation. Yeah, you, you think know? you would you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have, uh... Unless, without that information, do you think you would have you would have approached that differently? You wouldn't. No, no, no. Approached? I knew what I had to do. Okay, okay. I knew I knew because my, my boy Michael told me the same thing. Okay. He's like, yo, if you ever follow somebody, and in my head, I'm like, oh, nigga, I'm not gonna follow nobody mm. that big. Yeah. You know who we're gonna follow? Like what? <laughs> Wait, whoa, who? Damon Wayne's Jr. How can yeah. I can handle that. Like, like that's that's nothing to me. Yeah. But he's like Chris Rock. I was like. Damn. God damn. So, I would never expect that. That story was crazy. So like Chris Rock, he brought me up and he made it like a little bit of a thing of it. He's mm. like, I don't know who we got going next. And I, he went, he made me like come out from the curtain a little bit. He's like, what, what? What's your name, nigga? <laughs> What's your name, nigga? What's your credit? I go, Revolt TV. He goes, Revolt TV? Oh, he must be a bad motherfucker if he follow me and Kev. <laughs> so he's good. He kind of hyped it up for me. And I went Hell out there. Yeah. And I talked. I was like, I was like, damn, y'all got me following Chris Rock. Bro, that's like, amazing. Yo. I was crazy. I was like, yo, you know, how does how nigga Chris Rock? Older than me, but dressed younger than me. <laughs> and everyone went crazy. I was like, that's, I go, that's how you know a nigga divorced. Whatever a nigga like sixty and he wearing a beanie on his head, that's how you know a nigga. And, and you, know, and you know, you know how bad the, the divorce is because every time he got to spend more money in the divorce, the yeah. beanie moved further back. That's funny his as head. hell, bro. So like, and I killed it. I did oh, great, man. you know. And like Giannis was there. He's like, yo, bro, the shit that you did, it was wise. It was brave. Like Brian Simpson dapped me up. Like that was that was like a great moment. And hell even, yeah. Even still. Nobody knows. Nobody cares. Yeah. But it's that moment, like that's for you. What, for me, that's what that's what makes those moments count. Yeah. And to the niggas that pay attention, mm. like you know, there's some people you know that reached out to me. Yo, what you did, like Barry Barry Weiss, who she's like a she's like a a, a very famous independent journalist. Okay. Uh, she's actually the one with the Twitter files going on right, right now with Elon Musk. He released Twitter files uh, detailing the shady shit that Twitter did during like the. Uh, the uh, the Joe Biden son yeah. with the laptop shit mm -hmm. and also some of the shit with Trump and inciting the riots. Uh, her and um, Matt Taibbi, they're like dissecting it. But she was at the show. She was like, "Yo, what you did, like that was brave. Like you're you're fuck, you're the guy." Yeah. You Listen, know? bro, congratulations, bro. I got to give you your that's amazing, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, but that's but amazing. That's, I, how, that's what you get in for. That's like, what you get like, in, but I don't. So I don't want to talk about that shit because like that's what you're supposed to do. Yes. You know, and that doesn't mean anything to anybody. Well, what you follow? Chris? Like I don't talk about that, but it's like it's moments like that that are very important in shaping you and yeah. who you are. You know, Th those moments are where, where like you get where you're like, okay. I'll do this for another year. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, like, right? You're like, I'll do this for another year. Let me yeah. see what more can happen. Exactly. Let me see what more can. It keeps you. It keeps you. It keeps you grounded. It keeps you focused. And after that, I was like, Yo, let's let's do it. Yeah, you know? listen, man. Like I said, from watching you last night, I can definitely tell you're working. Your head's down. You're knocking shit out the park, bro. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of you, bro. I'm gonna be watching and seeing what you got going on. I'm excited to see whatever you put your name on, man. Of course, bro. Uh, thank you for stopping by to help me you know, do this show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where can people follow you, man? Where can people uh, uh, check you your can stuff follow out? Follow me at Harvin fifteen. YouTube, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Uh, follow my podcast, the uh, Giannis Papas Hour. We just had a rebrand. Mm. Giannis Papas Hour. It's on YouTube. We're, sat we're a satirical news show. We make fun of everything that's going on right now. Also, subscribe to our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Yanni Long Days. You know, it's a, little, it's a little extra. We get wild. We get fun. We get free. You know, it's free. You know, but not, not for you. It's $5 a month. <laughs> it's $5 a month for you, but it's free in nature. You know, we, we, we're not held back by anything. So, yeah, man, come on over and follow, and follow this podcast. Hell Tell yeah. Subscribe to this podcast. Thank Thank you. There's not a lot of shit going on in Jacksonville. <laughs> Absolutely not. You the can, Writer's Block Podcast. You can tell that by driving two minutes on 95. Okay? <laughs> All right? You see nothing but pines down here. Uh, All right? When people say that, that global warming is an effect, just go to fucking Florida. You can, you can show that it's we not. Chill it. We okay? chill it. We chill it. It's chilling. But support Bobby Brown Jr. and this podcast. Listen, tell man. your friends about it because there's not much going on in Jacksonville. And he's a young brother doing it.
big. Jared, I appreciate you, man. Thank you so of much. Course, I love you, brother. Hey, uh, episode 80 of the Writer's Block Podcast. This was special to me. I'm out of the 70s. I got to meet somebody who, you know, young and is also fucking killing it, man. Yeah, man. If you ever come to New York, you got a home with me, bro. Hey, I'll be there, brother. I'll be there. Jared Harvin right now with Giannis Pappas. Uh, shout out to the Comedy Zone for letting us get this done. Shout out to y'all for listening. This is the Writer's Block Podcast. Until next time. I'm at a loss for words, cause y'all